In the last video, we kicked off training on Flappy Bird and saw tiny improvements. However, this environment takes a very long time to train. Of course, I did some training before recording this series. So let's go over the results of that. Let me open the log. Let's see how long I trained. I started on 2116, went all the way to the next day till 2021, so almost 24 hours. It did almost a million episodes and reached a reward of 106. I ran this on a low power laptop and I only try adjusting a few hyperparameters. So this is in no way the optimal obtainable result in 24 hours. Let me run Flappy Bird before we take a look at the graph. Here we go. Let me show you the best one first, and then I'll show you the worst one. Notice how close the bird is to grazing the uh, pipe. Ideally, it should fly through every pipe with a lot of space above and below. But unfortunately, with reinforcement learning, we don't have a lot of control over what the bird learns. This is where the bird hits the tiny corner of the pipe and the episode ends. That was the best attempt so far. Let's see the worst one. I don't like how it takes a nose dive at the beginning, but uh, I guess there's nothing we can do about it. This is where it touches the tiny, tiny corner of the pipe and the episode ends. Now let's talk about why it was able to get 19 points in one instance and only 3 points in another instance. I'm not sure if you noticed, but the configuration of the pipes are different in every run. The bird is not just learning one configuration, it's learning numerous number of combinations. In the instance where it only had 3 points, if during training the bird did not encounter that configuration very often, it may not have been able to learn it. If I were to train another 24 hours, 48 hours a week, it might be able to solve any combination of uh, configurations. Let's hop back to VS Code and take a look at the graph. You can see that Epsilon decayed to the minimum pretty quickly early on. Starting about here, 95% of its actions are the best known actions and then about 5% of the actions are random. This deep drop here corresponds to this deep improvement. And after Epsilon settles at 5%, you see this slow improvement here. Let me try to explain what's happening. At the beginning, the bird is spending 100% of the time on exploration, taking random actions. Around here, after the first pipe, I think this is where it uses up all the Epsilon and it's only doing 5% random after the first pipe. So the rest of this way, it's spending 95% selecting the best actions and it only has a 5% chance of finding an improvement. So as you can imagine, after the first pipe, the bird's spending a whole ton of time trying to figure out how to get past the next pipe. And then after it gets past the second pipe, it spends a whole ton of time here and so on. And that's why it takes so long to train. But why do we have to settle for something low like 5%? Why can't we do, say, 50%? If we settle epsilon minimum at 50%, that means the bird is going to do something random half the time and take the best action half the time. If it does 50-50, what are the odds of it getting all the way to pipe 19. The arch will be very low that it can get very far. And that's why we have to settle for a very low improvement rate. Okay, that is it. I will be sharing my code in GitHub. So look for the GitHub link in my description. Since the introduction of DQN, there has been many improvements made to it. So in my future videos, we'll talk about the improvements.